All right, thank you so much for staying with us. This is OI in the morning, and we are looking into the judicial leadership of CJ Maraga as compared to his predecessor, Dr. Mutunga. We have mentioned so much into what Dr. Mutunga did and what Maraga has come in and done uh, following the footprints, uh, veering off, and of course, looking into the service of justice. Has it been... Uh, in partiality, we have talked about that, and now we want to look into other things that CJ Mutunga did and what CJ Maraga has been doing. And when his time is coming to an end, what kind of legacy will, will he be uh, leaving us with? Considering even the president will be leaving, so we have two men to watch as to what they will be leaving us with. I'm speaking to Jack Muman, he's a political activist and political analyst, Cyrus Elito. Now, gentlemen, before we went on that break, I was saying. Uh, CJ Dr. Mutunga, he supported and strengthened the judicial training institutes as a nucleus for juris, uh, juristic training and an institution of higher learning. What has Maraga done to this dream? Has he improved on it or he hasn't, Cyrus? Uh, I can say, yeah, mm -hmm. he, has, uh, he has improved. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I look forward to is his successor mm -hmm. to implement it fully. Right. You can say he has improved. Mm -hmm. He has not uh, uh, done it to our expectation, but he has done it based on the budget that he had. Mm -hmm. and remember, the judiciary has also been facing issues with the budget mm -hmm. allocation. Mm -hmm. And this is because, uh, from where I see it, is. Uh, and I said this thing earlier on, is that because he decided to dine and wine with the executive. Unlike his predecessor, who never dined and wine with the executive. Mm -hmm. He knew, I'm here, and I'm, I'm part, and I'm an arm of the government, independently, mm -hmm. as the executive is, and as the legislature is. Because mm -hmm. there are three arms of government. So mm -hmm. let me play my role. So uh, that is what Nani came uh, to a time and forgot. So he decided also to go in rallies, with the, with, the, with the president, meeting with the president. So these are, you see, when you <laughs> dine with them, they, 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 when you're sitting with them and talking to them, they'll use you and they'll dump you because they want you to implement the idea mm -hmm. and not the idea of Monenji. And when you're independent, then you'll be service to Monenji. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that uh, he did. And you see, uh, Maraga, he'll be remembered for two things. Mm -hmm. One, Nullification of <laughs> election, 2017. Mm -hmm. Two, sending an anniversary letter to the president on the dissolution of the parliament. The parliament. Those we'll are be, some of the things we'll that be looking be into remembered. that in, in a bit. But for now, uh, into uh, considering the dreams of the uh, his predecessor, Dr. Mutunga, mm -hmm. has he lived by this? Yes, he has, and uh, I don't want to be seen as only brief <laughs> on the chief justice mm -hmm. but i think he has uh, tremendously done well mm -hmm. uh, i agree with uh, my co-panelist uh, cyrus that he has done though not to our expectation but at least mm -hmm. up to where he could depending on the kind of uh, budget allocation that was given to the mm -hmm. judiciary and um, one thing that uh, I still don't agree with uh, Cyrus, mm -hmm. I don't think it's correct to say that uh, the Chief Justice has uh, been dining with the executive. Um, I think it has been a challenge because uh, the three arms of government have not been working hand in hand and that is where we've uh, always had problems with the achievement of the judiciary. Mm -hmm as uh, early envisioned by the predecessor of the now Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. Because the executive has always held it his ground and uh, legislature has always held it his ground and the uh, judiciary has worked mm -hmm. on it his own. Mm -hmm. So it has always been a friction between the three arms of government. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, uh, one... Um, Maybe as we look into final things or what uh, Dr. Mutunga did, uh, he spearheaded independent and principled dialogue, consultation, and collaboration between the three arms of the government. 
uh, you have just rightly said it is not okay to say he dined with the executive. You have been saying he dined with the executive, that is uh, CJ Maraga. But for him, uh, Mutunga, he, he, he looked into the dialogue, consultation and collaboration. We have seen the CJ Maraga complain uh, how he's being treated. I heard the critics say uh, he has been a crybaby into what he's being treated. What do you make of all this? Uh, you see, for you to be a mediator, you need to be independent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the executive has used the parliament and the judiciary to some extent to uh, achieve its own agenda against the Manainchi. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the parliament has been using as a rubber stamp. The judiciary has been just sitting there and watching saying nothing. Mm -hmm. When even uh, bad laws are passed, you shall sit down, does not give directives. Mm -hmm. And that's where now mediation needs to come in. Just to come in, just to weigh in on that before it goes for. Uh, I don't understand when you say that the judiciary has just been sitting there when uh, bad laws are passed without giving direction. It's known and it is in public domain that uh, so many uh, court orders have been issued and uh, they have been disregarded. Mm -hmm. So even if the judiciary issued orders or directives and they are not, uh, <coughs> they are not obeyed. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what else, uh, what else is left of the, Maraga. Uh, uh, then I think the judiciary. question should be, question this, eh? if, if the court orders are not being implemented or adhered to, yes. what next then? Good. Now, for example, if the Reverend Hillary, you have a case today in court. Mm -hmm. You don't respect the court orders. What is only what always happen? What will happen to you next? You'll be arrested. Yeah. Okay. Who does the arrest? When who see, does the arrest? The arrest is done by the 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 the, 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 the police. The police is who? under okay. who? Under the executive, isn't it so? I don't object. Yes. It's under the executive. Yes. But you see, this is an independent organ. Mm -hmm. Okay. You should be up to task to execute your mandate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, okay? the, because the judiciary's, see, the, 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 uh, judiciary's the, 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 mandate the police, ends when they issue the, police, the order. The police the is a order. service provider. Mm -hmm. Okay? The in police books. is a service provider. In books it is, yes. and what? Uh, what you're trying to say, we have a problem. We have a problem, a big problem, not just a problem. Yeah. We have because a big if, problem. If in the this court country. issues orders yes. and then someone uh, disobeys the orders, yes. an executive order will come, I'm forgetting the name, someone will be arrested mm. and taken to court. We have seen our leaders being uh, arrested and taken to court, and then they are bailed out. Mm. What if it happens to the I authorities? Mm. What if? What if the orders now come, assumingly, mm. uh, they want to arrest the president, which yes. we know. Oh, I, according to the books and the law, it can, mm. but now there are limitations. If we have this problem, the court orders are not obeyed. What's next? Who is to blame? What will we do? So, in your I, own opinion, I, I think uh, that is a very gray area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very gray area that uh, needs to be looked into mm -hmm. consolidatively as a as a nation. Mm -hmm. We need to find, uh, we, we need to, f to navigate mm -hmm. around that gray area mm -hmm. as a country. So as we have a problem, <laughs> what do you think we should do? The, 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 the biggest problem we are having mm -hmm. in this country is psychophancy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we know this is the right thing that we need to do, but we don't adhere to it, okay? Just because we, 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 someone somewhere mm -hmm. has not directed us to do so. Okay? Psychophancy has led us to be where we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, uh, being led by individual people in the name of CSOs, activists, mm -hmm. just to not to champion the agenda of Monainchi, but to champion an individual's agenda. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a difference between Monainchi and an individual. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because there are so many constitutional things that are not being adhered to by the executive, by the parliament, and by the uh, judiciary. Mm -hmm. But you see, as a civil society, mm -hmm. we sit there, mm -hmm. relaxed, looking at it, and watching at our comfort zone, mm -hmm. okay? Waiting for just 
uh, being button pressed or remote control mm. if uh, so mu- so much civil society have believed that uh, we need to join uh, 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 the 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 the, the mandamano thing that has been always been called by the the the, the so called opposition led by mm. the former premier mm-hmm. and that has been a very wrong notion so the civil society has blindfolded mm. this country for a very long time right so what we need to do as uh, mwananchi we need to st- to uh, to develop uh, what we call uh, uh, a civil uh, a civil uh, a civic education mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. now we need uh, civil societies now they need to sit down and say what are we going to train or teach our, our, our people on the on the, uh, on civic rights mm-hmm. on how to handle their, their their leaders accountable on how to ensure that there is good uh, constitutional adherence so this is now what the civil society needs to sit down and look into so we shall uh, uh, have a, a good country and a better country mm-hmm. when good uh, good good uh, good good, champ- good good champions rise up mm-hmm. looking at the constitution we have a problem in the implementation of the constitution now this is what we are going to focus on this is what we are going to do to ensure that the the implementation of the constitution is fully implemented and we are we are not going to achieve this if this one is not achieved okay. that is what the civil society now needs to do for us to be at a better place or else mm-hmm. this country is going in a very wrong direction all right jack during his uh, tenure dr mutunga is believed to have uh, been on the front line to fight corruption. He was someone who he said to have been against uh, corruption. Coming to CJ Maraga, what do you make of him? Well, um, like uh, Saira said before, CJ Maraga, uh, CJ Mtunga. In his life, or rather, when he began his public life, he was an activist. Mm-hmm. And uh, CJ Maraga has come out as a, a soft-spoken person. And he has been uh, a person who works behind, uh, behind scenes. When it comes to matters corruption, I think it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be fair to judge him as a person, mm-hmm. but it will be rather fair if we charged ourselves as a nation mm-hmm. during his tenure as a CJ. Mm-hmm. Did the executive support him? Did, he, did his team in the judiciary support him? Mm-hmm. Did the legislature support him? Did the Kenyan populace support him? Mm-hmm. I think from that point of view, then we can be able to know mm-hmm. what steps or rather what gains or losses have we made as a country in corruption during CJ Maraga's tenure. Mm-hmm. We've, we've had a very serious uh, corruption allegation and corruption cases during Maraga's tenure. Mm-hmm. And uh, we all know how most of them have gone and uh, how others have gone uh, without uh, wanting to mention because some uh, some of them are some of them are bigger bigger names Mm -hmm. and so i think as a nation we are losing we are losing uh, the the fight against corruption not uh, cj maraga so we have to come out mm-hmm. as a nation and fight corruption because it is what is ailing this nation. Mm-hmm. Kenya is a very resourceful country. I've got a lot of resources. Mm-hmm. If harnessed and put into right use, Kenya will rank among the best countries that anyone will want to live in. Mm-hmm. But going the way it's going, most investors are pulling out of this country. I don't know what will happen in, in the coming generation. All right, fair enough. Uh, Cyrus, yes. what has uh, CJ Maraga done in the fight against corruption, considering we have a case of uh, the dams, the Arol and Kimarel, two years down the line? Um, and as I stated earlier, uh, the judiciary should have come up with a mechanism of uh, 
uh, expediting the corruption cases mm -hmm. because it is something that is ailing uh, the country. It is something that needs to be looked into seriously. Uh, we need to look at the economic crimes. We need now to set a precedence and say this is how economic crimes are going to be dealt with from now henceforth. And as an institution, as an arm of government, this is the direction we are giving mm -hmm. as a, uh, so that we can save our country. Uh, Maraga has mentioned several times that there are corruption issues within the judiciary. Mentioned. Mm -hmm. But I have not seen him take an action towards it. So if the institution itself is corrupt, how are you going to handle corruption issues mm -hmm. that will face other normal Kenyans who are not part and parcel of that institution? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Who just expect what we call service delivery from the institution. So this is a challenge. And uh, I call upon the next CJ who will take up from Maraga mm -hmm. that uh, these are some of the key issues that should be looked into. Okay? Mm -hmm. The corruption cases and uh, the, 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 the uh, let me say, other economic crimes that are there. Because, one, I can give an example of uh, the drug cases. Uh, the High Court uh, was dancing and uh, playing around with the Akasha issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. But when they were taken to America, it only took a few, few days mm -hmm. okay, for them to be handed a sentence. So, what is the difference? And you see, in everything that we do, we borrow a leaf from another country. country. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Maraga issued, uh, 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 let me say, that uh, ruling uh, of, on the nullification of the election, mm -hmm. it is something that was borrowed by other courts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because I am very sure when you refer to something, in the law, you'll always refer to a ruling that was made a by a certain case. judge, mm -hmm. certain place, at a certain time. Okay? Because they may look similar in one or the other. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a big problem with this issue of handling cases in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe uh, the judiciary uh, thing, institution, that was formed, it was meant to... Uh, 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 update the judges, the magistrates, on how to handle cases in the modern society. Okay? Oh, and how to expedite cases mm -hmm. and so that we may not have backlog of cases in the courts. Okay. Let, okay. Me, mm -hmm. let me say something on that before. Um, I want to believe that uh, going forward, uh, even as Sarah says that uh, you will wish to see the, the success of Maraga doing much better than what Maraga has done. Mm -hmm. We will change, or rather we'll have many more chief justices coming in. Let us look at the chief justice not as a person, but as, the, uh, as an office. Mm -hmm. Let us empower the office. Mm. All right. Let us empower the office so that whatever the, uh, the whatever comes from the office is seen as coming from the chief justice's office, not from the individual who hosts the office. All right. Enough of the comparison. Let's talk about now the CS Maraga. Uh, two things or three things. One, uh, the nullification of the. Uh, elections that is 2017 and the advisory that he gave the other day and the complaints that have been there from uh, the appointment of judges and the budget cut which has been said over time again that it has uh, become an impediment in exp expediting the cases uh, in terms of uh, the budget they need money but they can't have the need judges they don't have and then the respect that has been given to the uh, the office of the chief justice now first things to look into is the recent advice to the president i want to begin with you jack um 
when he gave this advisory, do you think he was trying to find some position, you know, like uh, I still have a say? Because many people are saying like uh, he's trying to be relevant. Not necessarily trying to to communicate uh, mm -hmm. his position, mm -hmm. but I think it is following what is written in the constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, Article two sixty one sub Article seven mm -hmm. uh, mandates him to advise the president to dissolve parliament in this uh, in these circumstances, mm -hmm. or rather in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. So by advising the president to dissolve parliament, I think Maraga was acting uh, from the contents of the constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is up to the, it's up to the president mm -hmm. to refer to the constitution, mm -hmm. which I believe is, uh, he has read and understands what, what it says. Mm -hmm and do what is needful or what is expected of him right. though it is a big uh, rather it is a uh, it's rather an awkward uh, awkward awkward position that we are in as a country mm -hmm. because at the moment we we have a lot of issues that we need to deal with as a country mm -hmm. uh, we don't uh, even the country doesn't have money if we do, we dissolve parliament today mm -hmm. that means we have to hold an election I don't think we have that money to mm -hmm. hold an election. But according to the constitution, that is what is required of the president to dissolve parliament because they have failed in enacting the laws that mm -hmm. are before them. Uh, secondly, Maraga did not just advise the president to dissolve parliament out of his own will or his own resolution. Mm -hmm. Remember, there have been petitions before him. Yeah. Five of them last year mm -hmm. from individuals. And one petition this year coming from the Law Society of Kenya asking him to advise the president to dissolve parliament. Mm -hmm. So he acted um, in respect of these petitions mm -hmm. and what is written in the constitution. All right. Yes. Now, Cyrus, do you think uh, the CJ uh, was trying to find his place? And is it fair to call for a dissolvement of parliament at such a time? Uh, you see, when you champion for something, you need to work and ensure it is well implemented. Mm -hmm. We championed for this constitution in 2010. Mm -hmm. We got it. Uh, then we should adhere to the constitution because it serves us. Mm -hmm. uh, for him, he did what is right as it is envisioned in, uh, envisioned in the constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that is the plight of the common manager. When he handed the ruling uh, on 2017 about the nullification of election, mm -hmm. he looked into the evidence that was stable. Okay? Mm -hmm and advised the IBC on what to do, mm -hmm. which didn't do up to now. And as I've always said, mm -hmm. we shall talk about the ills of IBC when election will never favor us. But right now, no one is talking about IBC. The parliament that needs to look into IBC issues mm -hmm. is seated comfortably discussing other things okay mm -hmm. the civil society that needs to talk about this uh, the ibc itself mm -hmm. seated comfortably like there's no issue mm -hmm. and there's a very big issue constitutionally mm -hmm. when you look at the ibc issue when when service delivery will be uh, done by the same same ibc mm -hmm. it will be it has not done well IBC has conducted several by-elections. Mm -hmm. And they'll be conducting soon in Mombasa. Which mm -hmm. no one has complained about. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, these are some of the things that we need to look into. So, constitutionally, he has tried mm -hmm. to ensure that the constitution is followed mm -hmm. to the latter. Mm -hmm. And that's why you've seen him. He also issue uh, those court orders mm -hmm. to even our leaders. 
who don't obey the courts. So he has tried on his own mm -hmm. to follow the constitution to the letter. And that is what we want. Okay. The only biggest problem we have is the loopholes in the constitution mm -hmm. that are not fully implemented. Mm -hmm. And when this constitution is fully implemented, then Kenya will be safe. Okay. Well, this is one of the best constitutions that we have. Just to add on that, uh, I think I fully uh, agree with Cyrus that uh, we have the best constitution. And the only problem is implementation of the constitution and respect of the, of mm -hmm. the same constitution. Right. And uh, I think I, I, I don't know if I should bring in this because I, I don't understand why we are clamoring for another constitutional change mm -hmm. when we haven't fully implemented the constitution that we have right now. Mm -hmm. they, they are calling it inclusivity. Inclusivity. <laughs> that yeah. is what we call it. That's uh, the most uh, uh, perpetuated agenda. Well, inclusivity will not solve uh, uh, the problems that we have in this country okay. unless we change our behavior as a, as a people. No, right. Yes. Now, still right or new, the, 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 the current uh, regime has been accused time and again of defying court orders. This particular advice by uh, CJ Maranga to the president, do you think it will be adhered to? Well, I can't speak for the president because uh, the decision lies with him. And uh, mine will just be to ask the president to do what is ex expected of him mm -hmm. by the constitution. Uh, do, do you think it is fair for us to have a by-election such a time? At this particular time, I don't think it is fair. Mm -hmm. And so even if the president did not uh, follow the advice of the CJ, mm -hmm. I think a process should be put in place to bring people on board, mm -hmm. all stakeholders on board, mm -hmm. to discuss this matter and have a way out on the on the issue or rather the the legislation mm -hmm. that in, in informed the CJ advisory. So people should come on the table and talk about this and come up, come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. If not, then if, if we don't have a way out, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it is said that there is no gain without pain. Mm -hmm. Then we can, we can take it. We can go for a by-election if the president so dissolved the parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A court orders have been um, disregarded in the past. Uh, many of them, a number of them has been mentioned. This particular one, Cyrus, do you think the president will heed? And uh, that's why I want to agree with the statement uh, Bita MP gave in parliament mm -hmm. uh, the other day. We should not personalize the advisory of Maraga to the president, mm -hmm. but rather look at it the way we are supposed to look at it. Mm -hmm constitutionally, in other words. Uh, court orders have been ignored, mm -hmm. and uh, this government has been known for ignoring the court orders, mm -hmm. which is a disobedience, mm -hmm. and that's why I always say, let us lead by example. Uh, for Chief uh, Justice Maraga, I think now this is the time he now needs to borrow advice from Mutunga on how to handle such an issue. Now, this is where now mediation needs to come in. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying so? The Parliamentary Service Commission met and uh, decided to file a petition in court mm -hmm. regarding the same same advisory. Which is constitutional as well. Yes, it's mm -hmm. in the Parliament. Mm -hmm. So, this is now where now these people need to sit down and discuss this issue. Because this is the Chief Justice who has issued an advice mm -hmm. to the President. All right. Parliamentary Commission has gone to the same court, which is headed by the mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need this now brings a quagmire to us mm -hmm. 
-hmm. as the citizens because you are the ones who are suffering. Remember, what is being pushed today? Okay, is the same thing that will be pushed in someone's in, in, in someone's advantage or disadvantage. Mm -hmm. uh, today we are championing for the to that gender. And you see what we always forget. We take the gender thing to be pegged on our sisters, our mothers, and our uh, the, 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 the female gender. Mm -hmm. That's where we, 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 we get it wrong. But if we can sit down and look at the issue of gender in a very sober way, mm -hmm. actually, we have to think critically into it. But now, my, my, my biggest question is, the uh, gender rule that has not been implemented, the persons who are in parliament today were voted, were elected members by us people who failed. And, and it, I should have voted no, for. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a culture that we have. You know, in this country, we have, um, we have many tribes. Mm -hmm. Culturally, uh, which is a very bad practice or very bad culture that we have in some areas, mm -hmm. like from where I come, my home county, which is Busia County, mm -hmm. we have seven constituencies. Out of the seven constituencies, mm -hmm. none is represented by a woman. So you see in this... They situation, never divide or something? They divide, but because of uh, the culture that uh, maybe exists in this uh, local area, mm -hmm. Uh, there is this belief of uh, it must be my men are the leaders. <laughs> yes, men are leaders, which is a very bad notion. Mm -hmm. So I think I still go back to the constitution, and that is why now Maraga's advisory comes in. Mm -hmm. The constitution mandated the parliament to come up with a law that will balance mm -hmm. the leadership in mm -hmm. both parliaments, mm -hmm. but it has not been done. If it had been done by then. Mm -hmm once they assumed office in parliament if they had uh, passed the law mm -hmm. balancing the parliament uh, as the constitution says mm -hmm. then we wouldn't be at where we are now mm -hmm. maybe th we would have had a formula where representation would be balanced say as, say as, as you respond to that tell me mm -hmm. if if uh, the the electorates happen to elect male gender only at some point the parliament will have the appointees now, should the appointments be uh, centered to the female gender for us to achieve the, that gender role? Uh, let me say this. He has come out very clear on that point. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to ask the same question. Even if parliament is dissolved today, mm -hmm. will we achieve the gender, the gender role? I'll tell you no. Mm. To some extent. Because of the the, the concerns he has raised. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to come from Bungoma County, mm -hmm. and we don't have a, an MP who is a woman, apart from the women rep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even the women rep position, okay, mm -hmm. was contested <laughs> in Bungoma by a man. <laughs> That's a serious. And he, 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 he came out clearly mm -hmm. to elaborate that the constitution. Says a person will represent the 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 Civic education should be conducted by now, let me say, the civil society should come up hand in hand, yes. team up with the e e I I and IBC, okay. team up with the Judicial Service Commission, team up with the Law Society of Kenya. Because these are some of the, why did I mention the two? The Law Society of Kenya understands the law, okay? Mm -hmm. The Judicial Service Commission ensures the law, the, the constitution is fully implemented and the law is adhered to. So when the civil society teams up with this, now to carry out a civil, a civic education to our people and tell them so that we get out of these stereotypes. 
then we shall be able to achieve this uh, gender. Because you never know, tomorrow mm -hmm. my daughter may be decide to become uh, a, a, a leader. Does, he, does she have to go for the women uh, seat only? Mm -hmm. And yet she can be an MP. We've seen women who have done good work. Julia Ojambo, we have uh, Dr. Naomi Shaban, she's done exemplary work, mm -hmm. okay, as an MP by then, okay, leave alone, uh, right, right, right now she's a woman, uh, rep, eh? but mm -hmm. then she was an MP, she did an exemplary job, mm -hmm. so there are people also who can give service delivery to the people, mm -hmm. but achieving it, it's another mm -hmm. theory. Mm -hmm. that needs to be implemented, that needs to be worked on. And that's why I call upon the civil society mm -hmm. to sit down, go back to the drawing board, because this is a very serious concern. All right. Constitutional concern. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack, uh, as you weigh into that, mm -hmm. uh, kindly paint us to what a picture of uh, if the president goes by the advisory and today uh, dissolves the parliament. Okay, before I go on to, uh, I delve on that, mm -hmm. just to add on what I was saying, um, even if today mm -hmm. we had the solution of parliament and we went back to election, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, we'll, come, we'll come back with the with realization of the third gender rule. Mm -hmm. And a picture of uh, if the president dissolved parliament today, mm -hmm. I think we are going to be in an awkward situation as a country mm -hmm. because uh, not everyone, uh, not everyone else means well mm -hmm. for this country. I believe I, I, it's my belief mm -hmm. because uh, we, we have se we have selfish individuals mm -hmm. among us. Mm -hmm. For example, today if the president decided to dissolve parliament. Mm -hmm. IBC on its side is not uh, fully is not fully constituted. And uh, someone uh, will run to court. someone will run to court mm -hmm. uh, put an injunction. Mm -hmm. It will and be pushed uh, for for one year. Yes. The or maybe <laughs> someone will just go to court and want to have the <laughs> IBC disbanded so that it is uh, mm -hmm. a fresh, uh, mm -hmm. reconstituted. And if so it is disbanded, the BBI will have to wait. Yes, so we will not have IBC in place. We don't have parliament. We don't. Uh, and even if the parliament is not there, mm -hmm. today we don't have. Um, I don't think we have budget in place uh, for an election, if an election was called. Mm -hmm. And unless parliament is in place to approve the budget, mm -hmm. where will he get money to? hold the same mm -hmm. the same uh, election that we'll be wanting to have after the dissolution of uh, parliament mm -hmm. so i think we are going to be a, in a very awkward situation mm -hmm. the blame still solely lies on the same parliament mm -hmm. had they done what was expected of them by then then we wouldn't be at where we are mm -hmm. so there is also lack of political really. goodwill mm -hmm. Uh, because if there was uh, political goodwill, this is something that cannot be achieved through a fair election. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying f n n not fair election, a free election. I'm not saying free and fair because there, there, there is no free and fair election in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's only free. <laughs> we are free to choose, <laughs> but we don't choose fairly. Mm -hmm. So in a free election, we are still not going to achieve a third uh, gender role. Mm -hmm. A formula has to be put in place right. to do the balancing. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where brains should be put together mm -hmm. and come with a formula or an arithmetic to balance the two parliaments. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. see, another, another question that people keep on asking mm. is that uh, as much as we call upon to give uh, uh, women their positions, what have they done the positions that have been given? Mm -hmm. What have they done to the society? 
they are the same. Are you saying the, they are, they are, the women rep position? Even the women rep position. Uh -huh. They are the same who are accused of corruption, even the governors. Mm -hmm. Look at the, we didn't expect to have uh, women governors mm -hmm. being queried on serious corruption allegations. Mm -hmm. So it, it also tints their image. Because when you come there, mm -hmm. you should lead by example that women cannot be mentioned in corruption cases, mm -hmm. but we can deliver. Right. This one will motivate the society. Uh, when a woman goes for, when a man goes for, let me say a gubernatorial position, mm -hmm. he'll pick a fellow man as a deputy. When a woman goes for a gubernatorial position, a man. he'll pick a man for a deputy. Mm -hmm. Where the reverse. You see? Mm -hmm. So it's like they don't believe in, in themselves. What if uh, a woman will pick a fellow woman to be a deputy? Mm -hmm. You saw in uh, Kitui. Teddy Ngilu picked a man as a deputy. Mm -hmm. Bomet, the late Laboso, picked mm -hmm. the current governor as mm -hmm. a deputy. Mm -hmm. Kerenyaga, the, the, he picked the deputy mm -hmm. as, the, as the man. Mm -hmm. Then why can't, and when uh, a man is vying, he picks a fellow man. Okay? Then why can't we say mm -hmm. uh, the deputy or the governor? Is a, ma a, 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 a woman, the deputy is a woman. Mm -hmm. So let, let them also lead by example. Let them also come out of those inferiority complex mm -hmm. they have surrounded themselves with. Okay? Mm -hmm. For us to achieve this, we sh it should also be practiced by themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not only uh, 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 wait for, uh, we, because we are the first uh, runner up. Then you'll be given a nomination slot mm -hmm. in the in the in the in the in the, in the nomination uh, party nomination. Then another thing that also look at uh, when you talk of political when you mentions of political goodwill is uh, and I've always stated we need to institutionalize our political parties, okay? Mm -hmm. Because political parties per se they have a, a stronger a, a stronger say to some extent mm -hmm. in some areas. Let me say, for example, ODM has a say in, 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 in some regions. Uh, Jubilee has a say in some regions. Uh, same to ANC and other parties, mm -hmm. WIPA and, and the rest. So if these parties are institutionalized, whereby they will come and say nominations are done fairly and squarely. Because there's no democracy in nominations. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the, uh, that one for free. Uh, and when nominations are held, if a woman is competing, if she wins the nomination, let her be given the certificate. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if this, for example, for Wipa, that's good in, 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 in Ukambani. Let's say we are going to start by giving MP slots, okay, mm -hmm. for four or three women in this. Women get out on, and compete and they go out, tell your people, these are also individuals. Because we need to achieve our constitutional mandate. These are our, 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 our people. We need also to elect them. We need also to test them. Mm -hmm. Let us go to the western region where we have Ford Kenya, we have ANC and ODM. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let them also talk to the people there. And that's why now we need political parties as institutions. Not individual uh, individuals mm -hmm. uh, having so much powers on political parties. Mm -hmm. For example, if our parties in Kenya were like the ones in Tanzania, CCM, parties in Kenya were like the ones in South Africa, ANC, mm -hmm. okay? Ghana has followed the suit. Then we could not be talking about all these things. These things can be achieved from our own political parties mm -hmm. when they become institutions. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if they are the way they are, we shall never achieve this gender. True. Thing. All right. Now, as, as we finish up, let's look at some of the comments uh, from our viewers. Now we have uh, Emma James. He says, uh, this is CJ Maraga, ha have never seen or heard anywhere Maraga having a chat with Kenya youths. Kenya's youths. Where does he get all the advice from? As, he, uh, as far as judicial leadership is of concern, a youth here is asking, Mrs. J. Ken Kiongelesho. So what role does the judiciary has to play with the youth? <laughs> uh, youths are my youth, and I've always said, mm -hmm. and I never have kind words for my fellow youths. <laughs> we are complacent. Mm. We wait to be given handouts. We wait to be called in a meeting. Mm -hmm. The first question I will ask, mm -hmm. what am I going to, to get mm -hmm. from that meeting? 
I'm not looking at the idea mm -hmm. I'm going to, 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 to table. But I'm looking at what am I going to get. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is much important of what I'm going to get than what I'm going to give, give out. Mm -hmm. So we need to get out of that cocoon. We need to realize ourselves. We need to know that we are the future of the nation. Mm -hmm. We are the builders of the nation. Mm -hmm. If you are young, you are supposed to build a nation. Because when you are old, you need now to mm -hmm. watch at mm -hmm. what you build. Mm -hmm. Not now start g g thinking on, on how to build. But you need to sit down, relax your mind, and watch what you build. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and become philosophical. Mm -hmm. what, what, I would, uh, sorry, what I would just want to tell um, our viewer, Emma, Emma. Emma and James, <laughs> Emma, is that uh, youth should stand up to something mm -hmm. and stop standing up to someone. Mm -hmm. Because most youth of this uh, nation uh, don't stand up to anything. Just like Cyrus is saying, even today as a political uh, activist, if I convened a sitting so that we chat away on an issue with the youth, mm -hmm. like just he said, he mentioned, it is like uh, the first question will be, mm -hmm. what are we being given? Not who is coming and what is he giving? Mm -hmm. who, is coming, who, who is coming and what is she giving? Mm -hmm. So l l let, us, let us confront issues as individuals, not because someone else is there confronting the issue. Mm -hmm. So let us stand up to something. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, ha we have Eunice Jockey watching from Eldoret. He says uh, Maraga is fine and all his rulings are wise. For an example, wanting to dissolve the parliament on concern of two the gender rulings serves him fair. For me, him is a good, he's, he's done a good job. We agree with this. <laughs> he, he, he acted according to the constitution uh, this is another one oh, on the youth as well bang bang he says no CJ Maraga hacheki, hacheki youths when he inafa what else we should he be doing to the youth <laughs> no, you see uh, mm -hmm. I asked you a question one day well, that's things concerning the youth mm -hmm. you are not Th you are not, uh, let me say, you are not 50 years. Mm -hmm. You are way below, let me say, even uh, you are below 30. You are, you are reaching 30, then you are reaching 30 now. Mm -hmm. But I asked you a question. Who held your hand and told you you can come and work at the station? To you yourself. Self-driven. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to be self-motivated. Let me see an issue that is pinching me. Mm -hmm. Because the issue that is pinching me is the same issue that is pinching you. And if I don't rectify the issue today, it will really affect me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And when it affects me tomorrow, mm -hmm. it will be pinching my grandchild, my child. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that we need to sit down and uh, that's why I always keep on calling upon the youths. Mm -hmm. Let us get out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Let us get out of the handouts. Let us not believe in the handouts. Mm -hmm. Let us use our minds mm -hmm. in the right way. Okay. The, 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 the Orangos that you see today who were championing for the, for the, for the constitution a long time ago, mm -hmm. he, came, he, he, he came to parliament when he was around 29 years old. So when did he start championing for the, for the, for the constitution? He was a, a young boy by then. Mm -hmm. So this is what right, we need to right be doing right now mm -hmm. as youths. Mm -hmm. Let us not just sit down waiting for discussing how, because how many youth sit down to discuss the constitution? I'll tell you, out of ten, one. Mm -hmm. But how many youths sit down to discuss Manchester, United, <laughs> Arsenal, mm -hmm. Liverpool? <laughs> how many youths sit down to discuss that? A lot. Mm -hmm. How many youths sit down to discuss about, uh, uh, let me say, uh, the, 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 being curvy, being model, being what? How many? Many. <laughs> but very few How to discuss the blah, constitution. Blah, blah, blah. Something that affects them daily. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's finish up by uh, 
going through these all of them uh Emma and james was watching from um mombasa thank you so much we have bd ashley from macha thank you kalale wene um jabani mukiza uh teshitoni nyele bang bang and augustine kavifi thank you so much for watching and of course i also have a fan who wakes up every morning to watch and you know kwamka uh, wasubisi among many other farms that i have come to non rispa thank you so much for always watching our show and uh, getting something from us here being a youth you need to learn as much as you can thank you gentlemen for coming and of course uh, trying to picture the kind of uh, situation we are in looking into the leadership the judicial leadership of cj maragas compared to cj uh, former cj uh dr mutunga how things have been how things are and maybe what we expect and even today we'll be expecting uh the results from the conference where the president is holding in terms of covid 19 restrictions whether the the curfew will continue and even if or whether our clubs will be opened or the economy in general whether it will be opened they have been my guest, Jack Momali, political activist and political analyst, Cyrus Litswa. Thank you so much for keeping us company. And of course, for your comments, my name is Dereva Hilary. I'll be seeing you again in the evening. For now, a very good morning to you. Have yourself a very good day. See you in the evening. Goodbye.